on student measures the Boca Ciega High Jazz Ensemble. This group for 15 consecutive years has won superior ratings in the Florida Bandmasters Association's District and State Festival. They most recently won first place nationally in Jazz Fest 97. Now, under the direction of Frank Williams, we are very proud to present with their renditions of Four by Miles Davis and Bardun and Places by Neil Slater, the Boca Ciega High Jazz Ensemble. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs>
Frank, welcome to Student Measures. And thank you. It's really a great honor to have you all here for our very first uh, program. It's amazing. You have 19 students all together in this group? Yeah, 19 uh, students from grades 9 through 12. One of the things that I was curious about was uh, how do you get this many students together to rehearse and, 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 and learn the music? Well, um, we have a kind of a piecemeal approach to this. Uh, first semester, um, the only kids who are scheduled for the class are the rhythm section and uh, a few soloists and kids who are really interested in jazz improvisation, music theory, that kind of thing. Second semester, we schedule the entire big band, and we also have rehearsals on Tuesday afternoon, every Tuesday, for two hours and a half after school, because even with the scheduling problems we have at Sixth Period Day and whatnot, we have two kids who are not scheduled for the class at any time. So they get together with us only one day a week. Now you also have a smaller group, don't you? you have yes. a combo group? Yes, we have a combo that is the big band is actually built around the combo. Uh, combo is the, what we do um, the entire first semester, learning uh, standard jazz material, um, scales, modes, chords, all those boring things <laughs> that uh, that you have to learn if you're going to really right. play the music. It's part of theory. Right. Um, how long has this group been in existence? I, understand, I know you've been there 17 years. Right. How long has the band been together? Well, the band was there when I got there, and it was a pretty good jazz band when I got there, uh, and that was 1981. So I'd imagine the band's been around for about 30 years. Um, this particular form of the band, doing the combo and the big band and being uh, more of a uh, straight-ahead jazz band, that has happened since I've been there over the last uh, 17 years. You know, in Pinellas County Schools, we talk a lot about uh, student achievement, and uh, I was wondering how you believe that music fits into high student achievement. Well, we're very fortunate, Bogey. It's real obvious to us. Um, the majority of the valedictorians at Bogus Eager High School uh, in the last 17 years have come from the band program. That is the majority of them from one program. Uh, we have several kids here from uh, members of the National Honor Society, a lot of other uh, very uh, honored groups. Uh, we have several scholarship uh, recipients in this band. And um, it has been shown many, many times that uh, the study of music enhances a kid's uh, achievement on SAT, uh, ACT, and any other standardized tests. So music you, is very important. You were telling me earlier that, uh, that there's a statistic that tells us that a lot of our professionals, our doctors, our lawyers, and people like that right. have some uh, music background in their past. Right. Even uh, both my personal physicians are musicians. And um, as a matter of fact, my attorney is also a musician. He was the very first band president I had at Bogus Yeager. But uh, we also have kids who graduated from this program who will work very actively as engineers with the space shuttle program. Mm -hmm. uh, some people will work with Ford Motor Company in design engineering. Uh, people work with, at the Pentagon, um, doctors, lawyers, whatever. Um, what music does is give a kid a sense of um, hard work, teamwork, uh, dedication to something. It makes them very, very human. Uh, and uh, those are, uh, are things that are going to be uh, helpful and make them successful in whatever they choose to do. So um, there are many, many studies right now, a new study has shown that if you start a kid studying music at a very early age, mm -hmm. it causes brain connections at an early age that really enhances their IQ uh, in later years. So music is, has always been one of the most honored arts, and uh, even now with the greatest scientific discoveries we can make, we are finding out more and more that music is very, very important in uh, helping kids develop real intelligence. That's fascinating. You know, one of the questions uh, I had when I was thinking about this group, being a musician myself, uh, because they're all high school students, right. you must have a problem with the fact that they're eventually going to graduate and, and, and move on, and the band is going to constantly change, and, and you have to add new players. Uh, I've had those years <laughs> where I thought um, I'd never replace uh, this kid or that kid or that kid, you know. And that goes back 10 years. But uh, I'm just happy to see them go on and pursue the things in life they're interested in. We have a new group of uh, kids who are ready to get started to replace these old, moldy guys who are singers. <laughs> and uh, we just continue to uh, make it work. We have a legacy now. Can we have a show of hands? How many seniors in the band today? Well, you've got your work cut out for you next year. Oh, yeah. Replacing band members. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a break. And we'll be back shortly with some more music from the Boca Siega Jazz Ensemble. But I'd like, uh, Frank, why don't you uh, take us out with a little bit of Seven Steps to Heaven. Yeah, Seven Steps to Heaven.
Did you know Pinellas County Schools employs over 18,000 people? Did you know Pinellas County Schools has over 144,000 students? Did you know Pinellas County Schools television reaches over 300,000 households with 24-hour programming? Did you know you could help underwrite the cost of these programs? Find out how you can become involved in the Channel 14 Sponsorship Program. Call 588-6297. Welcome back to Student Measures. I hope you've been enjoying this great jazz music today and that you'll come back every week to hear more great music from the students in Pinellas County. And now once again, the Boca Ciega High Jazz Ensemble. Four. <laughs>
That was hot. Thank nice you. Tunisia. Thank you. Um, what I want to talk about, I want to give uh, our people at home a little music lesson. And uh, one of the instruments that's most thought of in jazz, not to right. slight any of the other ones, but the saxophone right. is talked about quite a bit in jazz. And uh, one thing I'm not sure that a lot of people understand is how many different types of saxophones there are. Right. There's still yeah. a debate going on about that. Uh, we've heard different. We've heard of Jerry Mulligan, and you have uh, people like Kenny G and, right. and, and different popular uh, saxophone players. And a lot of them play different types of saxophones, right. and they sound different. Right. right. What I'd like you to do, if you could, is explain to us uh, briefly just the difference and how they look and how they sound. Right. All right. Well, basically, there are four uh, common saxophones. We have uh, these guys stand here. Um, this is a soprano saxophone. It's normally a straight instrument, but we do have curved varieties. It's in B flat, and it's an octave above the tenor. Soprano, please. <laughs> Kenny G's favorite instrument. Okay. Then there's a tenor. <laughs> and uh, that we like to say John Cole trained in that, that instrument. Uh, next we have the alto uh, saxophone. It is actually an octave higher than the baritone here. Okay. You will notice that this kid played both soprano and alto. Most saxophone players play all the variety of the instrument. Then we have the baritone sax is the granddaddy, the bottom. Okay. It gets way down there. There are some others, bass, contrabass, saxophone, but these are the more common variety that we have these days. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. And the saxophone's been around for probably, I don't know, 100 years or yeah, more. Yeah, at least Adolf <coughs> Sax they invented somewhere around 1860 in that area somewhere. And I had read somewhere where when they first invented the sax, it wasn't shortly after that, they ended up with like 45 different models right. of saxophones, and, and, and now it's limited down to, to about five different uh, forms. About five common saxophones, and there are a few extremists still out there. Playing some have, odd ones. Uh, they have some odd ones. We still have Stephen Audley saxes around and contrabass saxes around and things like that. So it may be uh, somewhere between six to eight still uh -huh. around, but uh, it's definitely been limited. That was really great, Frank. I want to thank, thank you, you for being with us today, and I want to thank the band, guys and gals, for being with us. You were just fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we want to thank you for being with us here on Student Measures, our first edition, and we hope that we'll see you next week where we present more music from the students in Pinellas County Schools. Thank you. Frank, why don't you take us out with a little something? All right, here we go, guys. One, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> If you've enjoyed this program produced by Pinellas County Schools Television, we'd love to hear from you. Call our TV 14 viewer response line at 588-6404.
Hello, I'm Dave Wagner, and welcome to Profile. Today we're presenting our second series of reports, interviews with Pinellas County school board members. There are seven school board members in Pinellas County. Uh, it's considered a part-time position. Each earns about $30,500 a year, an amount determined by the state of Florida. Uh, it's for you to get to know your school board members in Pinellas County, learn about their backgrounds, and what they bring to their jobs. Uh, we're joined today by Jane Gallucci, school board member at large. You were elected to the Pinellas School Board last year? Correct. Give me an idea. Why did you become a school board member in Pinellas County? Why did you want to become one? Well, I've worked for the district for approximately 10 years as a guidance counselor. I've seen that side of the district. Uh, I have two children that graduated from Pinellas County Schools. They did receive their education K through 12. So as a parent, I've seen uh, that side of the school district and also we are a small business owner in Pinellas County and I've seen that side. So there were issues that I felt that I could uh, look at and, and help change for the better and bring my expertise to the, to the school board. You were a guidance counselor for, for nine years in Pinellas County Schools. What does that experience bring to the job for you? Oh, a varied uh, experience of yesterday we had a workshop and we talked about uh, bringing services, social services, to uh, children and how important that is and how much we enable parents by doing that. And so very much life experiences I can share with other board members of the actual workings of a, of a, inner workings of a school and working with parents and children of what, what's important and what we need to focus on. What do you think is important? What do we need to focus on? We need to focus on getting children to school. We need to focus on giving them goals. We need to focus on having healthy, happy children that come into our schools. And, and that's kind of a poly in the, you know, Pollyanna approach. But that's the ultimate. If you were to ask me what we would like and how to educate children appropriately, we don't have all of those things. So we need to deal with all those variables and make school a safe place and give children goals for highest their highest expectations that they could possibly reach in life so that we can have productive members of society. When you talk about their expectations, are expectations high enough for Pinellas County school students, do you believe? I believe we're making, we're, uh, we're getting there. Uh, we need to continually work with students to show them that as they take that, that rung of the ladder, one more step and one more step, they can do it. It's kind of like the athlete, too, who runs the mile and whatever, and then the coach says, but you can do it a little bit faster. And that, the same thing applies to academics. You can study a little bit harder. You can reach a little bit higher. And we're, we need to be there to make every student successful and show them that they can do that. Because many of our uh, employees have done just that. Uh, they haven't had everything handed to them, and they've had to reach high and far to get where they are. And I think we need to share those stories, those real-life stories with students also. Beyond sharing those stories, what do you think it's going to take to get Pinellas County school students to that level? Um, a high-performing workforce, and we're working on that. We're working on giving our teachers uh, more training to have them use different techniques in the classrooms to bring every student along and one of ours is our student achievement model and our uh, student achievement institute in the summertime where we give extra training to our teachers and then we call it feeding those teachers go back into their their schools and uh, they show another teacher something that they've learned and then it's transferred into another classroom so we're growing pots of flowers all over the school district some people on school board call you the quality queen why do they call you that <laughs> um, I was very fortunate to be chosen to go to Carwise Middle School which was the district's pilot school in quality um, methods using quality methods taking what the Japanese have had learned from Deming and applying it to their manufacturing environment and setting up quality circles and listening to their employees and listening to their customers as to what they wanted in a car and we took the Deming principles uh, education has and applied them through the Governor Sterling Award and the Baldrige Criteria to education. And so we empower our, the faculty, we empower the students to help make decisions and when everybody has a buy-in into the school and into the classroom, then they all have a sense of, well, I got to make this work. I really have to chug faster and it's like the little engine that could. 
Uh, we use lots of techniques with the students, and they survey and uh, their classrooms at the end of six weeks and see how they've done, what, where they need to go, every one of the classrooms, every one of the classes has a mission statement, just like the district has a mission statement. So we've aligned all of that down into our school. You talk about uh, students, teachers, parents feeling empowered. Do you believe they feel empowered in Pinellas County? How much are their voices heard right now, and can you do a better job? We can always do a better job, and that's another call quality tool called continuous quality. Um, improvement and our plan do study act mode where you plan something you study it you do it and then you go back and and revisit it again we always can do a better job I think we're doing a better job in listening to our customers listening to our parents the, the schools that your children go to or my children went to we're the community that knew what we needed for that school and what the socioeconomic development was in that school. And so this, the school advisory councils, the PTSAs, et cetera, need to have a lot of input into each and every school and then site-based management. How do you make decisions when you have so many different parents with so many varied opinions? For example, at, at Northeast High School, there's been talk of going to a traditional high school. Uh, there are some parents who are very much opposed to that, and then there are, are parents who are pushing for a traditional high school. Um, how do you make decisions, and, and who, do you, uh, uh, who do you follow? Whose opinion do you follow when you've got so many varied opinions out there? Well, you have to trust the process, and the board has learned how to do that. You set up a process, and that's another quality tool. And how we did with Northeast High School was when we learned that there was more than one high school interested in whatever is going to come out that a traditional high school is, we said that we needed a cross-functional team. We needed representatives from the SAC, from the PTA, from the community, from the faculty and staff to be on this cross-functional team to come up with what they saw as an overview, uh, a draft of what a traditional high school would look like in Pinellas County if the board were to vote on it. We're still waiting for that final report. We're we're really urging people to trust the process and to be involved and be an active uh, participant in that process. And then if there's still other things the board needs to hear, we're willing to hear those, but we want it to come in an organized fashion also uh, and listen to our customers also. We still haven't heard, I don't think, from some of the silent majority of people that are currently uh, parents of students at Northeast High School, nor have we heard from the students at Northeast High School yet. And I think that's very important to ask them. It's their school. In general, do you hear a lot from parents? Do parents, teachers, students call you up and say, hey, I'm concerned about this? Yes, I, I've had, um, I really like to hear from the kids. And I've had phone calls, uh, not as many as I would like, but I get out to the schools and I had a couple on the exam exemption policy that we had. And they called to say, we just want you to listen. You know, we want you, we want to tell you what we have to say. We also have students' rights and responsibilities, which we meet with um, twice a year, and the students have asked to have more. And it's a good time for the board members to sit down in a small group with representatives of all the high schools and middle schools and discuss issues. Um, one came up last year of, of uh, smoking in the bathrooms, and it was the students' initiative to say, we want it stopped. It, not the faculty, not the principal, it's the students saying, we want it stopped in our schools, and what can you do to help us? And we have put forth an initiative, and the, the uh, high schools have come up with ideas to help that um, be obliterated in, so that children don't have to put up with that in the building. We need to take a quick break here, but when we come back, I want, I want to talk to you about what you believe is the most pressing issue facing the Pinellas County School System. Right now. We'll have more profile with Jane Galushi in just a moment. Did you know Pinellas County Schools employs over 18,000 people? Did you know Pinellas County Schools has over 144,000 students? Did you know Pinellas County Schools television reaches over 300,000 households with 24-hour programming? Did you know you could help underwrite the cost of these programs? Find out how you can become involved in the Channel 14 sponsorship program. Call 588-6297.
And we're back with Jane Gallucci. I'm Dave Wagner, and uh, we're talking to Jane. She's a school board member. We're talking to her about her job and what she brings to her job and her background, some of the pressing issues she believes are facing.